I'm Tracy at Just Dig It Farms and today I'm at Petals from the Past. I'm at work and I just want to talk to you a minute about um, an old-fashioned shrub that every southern gardener loves. Hydrangeas. We all love hydrangeas. Um, there's all different kinds of hydrangeas and one of the most common questions that we get asked around here is when do I prune my hydrangeas? Or we'll get asked the question, um, my hydrangeas bloomed beautifully last year, but this year I didn't get any blooms. Why was that? Usually the answer is because they pruned it at the wrong time. And another common question that we get a lot is, when I bought my hydrangea it was blue, and this year in my garden it was pink. So I thought I'd just share some information with you guys about some of the different kinds varieties of hydrangeas and when to bloom and a little growing information about them. Pruning hydrangeas is, the different varieties require pruning at a different time. So um, if your hydrangea blooms, sets buds and blooms on new growth, then you, you'll prune those late winter, early spring. If your hydrangea blooms on old growth, then you're gonna want to prune those um, after they finish blooming. Otherwise, you'll you'll prune off your your buds and your blooms. So that that's like the general rule. Now to know which ones bloom on old growth and which ones bloom on new growth. And when you know that, then you'll know when the right time is to prune them. So let's take a look at some. First, let's talk about hydrangea macrophyllas. Macrophyllas are your traditional hydrangeas that have the big mop head blooms, mop head hydrangeas, or the um, lace cap hydrangeas, the French lace cap hydrangeas like this one. These are macrophyllas. These kind are gonna bloom on the old wood. So you wanna prune these after they finish flowering. So we're getting ready to start pruning macrophyllas now. It's June, they're beginning to finish up their show. The color of your hydrangea is going to really depend on the acidity in your soil. If your soil is more acidic, it's gonna be more blue. If your soil is more alkaline, it's gonna be more along the lines of pink. And if you have a neutral pH in your soil, it's gonna be um, more purple. So what I usually tell people if they want a blue hydrangea is get a blue one, take it home, put it in the ground. Next year when it blooms, see what color it is. That'll help you determine the acidity in your soil. So if you want it to stay blue and it comes out pink, then you wanna add sulfur. Sulfur is what lowers that acidity. So you could do like aluminum sulfate, you could do wettable sulfate, that will lower the acidity and keep them blue. If you want them, if they're blue and you want them to be pink, then to make your soil along the lines of neutral alkaline, you wanna add lime to your soil. And if you'll do it that fall, then next spring, you should have the color that you, you're you wanting. There's all different kinds of microphylla hydrangeas, the mop heads. Endless Summer has a collection of repeat blooming hydrangeas. So you'll get blooms throughout the summer. And um, there is just the original one here. There's Blush and Broad, which is one of my favorites. It starts out this pretty white, pale pink. It's just gorgeous. And then as it dries, it looks like this. It's amazing. It's so pretty. And then there's Bloomstruck, which is awesome. And it just has like loads of clusters of little mop head blooms. And this is Twist and Shout. This is an endless summer one of the Endless Summer collections, and it is really pretty. It's a lace cap. So you can see the difference between a lace cap and a mop head. And these usually typically grow between three to six feet tall and wide. And the best place to plant these would be where they're getting some morning sun and afternoon shade. Look at this blush and broad. 
which is an endless summer. Look how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous. And then this is Fuji Waterfall. It's beautiful too. It's a lace cap. So pretty. And there's all different kinds. There's Merit Supreme. Now these are not endless summer varieties, but there's Merit Supreme. There's um, Glory Blue, and there's Penny Mac and Mini Penny. Mini Penny stays smaller. It's like a three to four foot by about three feet with when a lot of your others are gonna be along the lines of four to six or so. Next kind of hydrangea I wanna to talk to you about is smooth hydrangeas or um, arborescens hydrangeas. These have a different leaf shape and they're like a ball, like a little ball of bloom. Now these are our, these are on the finishing end and they're they're drying, but I love hydrangeas when they dry. I think they're gorgeous. So there's different kinds of these. There's Incredible, which this one is Incredible. So pretty. There's Incre um, Invincible Blush which gets a, which has like a blush pink color to it. And there's Annabelle, which is your more common traditional kind. I'll show you that one in a minute. So these bloom on new wood. So that means that you're gonna prune these when they're dormant and late winter, early spring. And the cool thing about these uh, types of hydrangeas is you can, these can grow in some sun like your macrophyllas and more traditional hydrangeas need some morning sun but the rest of the day should be shaded these can actually grow with almost full sun now i think they tend to do better if they have some afternoon shade especially our alabama heat um, they just kind of get you know a little bit on the wilty side but they can tolerate more sun we have annabelle actually planted in two different spots at the nursery here um, we have one in a very shaded area, and then we have one that gets complete western exposure. Daddy, what are you doing? Just hmm? oh. working in my lilies. What's up, Zeta? This is Annabelle. And this is one that we have planted in the afternoon sun. It gets that hot western exposure, and she's doing great doing good and we have one planted in the shade as well which is doing good so you can see that they can take um, full sun and still do great like I said this is on the end of its big show I'm gonna put a picture in here that I took a few weeks ago when Annabelle was looking really pretty This is um, oak leaf hydrangeas, which is hydrangea corsifolia, I believe is the right way to say that. I'm not sure, but um, this one is Alice, but this, the, 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 they're native. The oak leaf hydrangeas are native, native species, and they're very, they have a very distinctive oak leaf. and. Um, these have more of like a cone-shaped bloom and you can tell that this is Alice because Alice when it finishes blooming and starts drying gets like a little pink to it but these are awesome these native hydrangeas they grow in our woods and on our wood line and they do better really with um, morning sun and afternoon shade as well. These native hydrangeas bloom on um, old wood, so you want to prune these after they finish blooming. There's all the different kinds of um, oak leaf hydrangeas. And like I said, they're native for us for southeast. They're snowflake. Snow Queen, Pee Wee, Harmony, Alice. Um, Pee Wee stays smaller. It's like about three feet and about three feet wide. 
harmonies like around four or five feet tall and wide. Snowflake and Snow Queen and Alice, they're larger. They're like around eight, six to eight feet tall and wide. Well, you saw it um, when I showed you Alice on the back of the porch a minute ago. So, this is the oak leaf hydrangeas. This is the hydrangea paniculatas. So, these are ones that um, do better in partial sun to full sun. As you can see, this one is, we have this planted up here by the road at our bridge and um, it gets no water or anything out here and it's in full sun and it just kicks. It does awesome. So these have more of like that panicular shape. This one is limelight. Limelight gets like six to eight feet tall and it's just so beautiful and so showy. It's July and it is just showing out. It's one of my favorites. So Little Lime is a smaller version of this. It's like four to six feet tall. Then there's one called Bobo. That's like three to four feet tall. There's all different varieties of paniculatas. There's Tardiva, which gets really tall, like eight, 12 feet tall. And you can actually prune this one into, the, uh, into a tree form shape. And there's Phantom right here. And like I said, there's Limelight, Little Lime, Bobo. There's one called Quick Fire, Quick Fire that uh, has pink plumes on it and it's like three feet tall. There's a Fire Light that's really pretty. It's like a reddish pink bloom. Climbing Hydrangea's awesome climbing vine. Uh, it takes a little time to get it started, but once it gets started, it is worth the blooms on it. And look at these leaves. It's just a great climber for deep shade. So this is an awesome climber that you can put in deep shade and it'll climb and bloom these cool hydrangea looking blooms. We have way too much fun around here. Hi guys. Hey. 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 What's going on? We're just enjoying lunch. Yep. Are you gonna put this kind of pressure on us? Huh? Yeah. Is this going on the website? I hope that that gives you some useful information today that you can take and use to grow these beautiful, old-fashioned Southern Garden treasures. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and have a beautiful day.